In this lesson, we are going to learn how to graph radical expressions. Now, what are radical? Radical is whenever you have a root, something like that. And so I'm going to show you in this lesson how to graph or how to draw these type of expressions or functions. So we'll start off with, oh, and another thing, we're also going to be looking at the domain and range. So there's quite a lot of examples. So we're going to start off with the most basic one that you can get. We call this one the parent function. The parent function is the original. So what you're going to do, obviously, we're going to need an x and a y axis. Okay. Now, what you need to remember is that this original function always starts at the origin, which is at 0, 0. And then it just does this type of shape, like that. Okay, and you can put a little arrow here. So that's that's the type of shape that this graph follows. So if you can remember that one, then it's pretty easy to do all of the others. Okay, so just remember that one, the parent. Now let's look at the domain. So the domain, remember that that is all of your x values. So you always look at the smallest x value, which would be over here. Remember your x-axis is this one. So can you see that the graph doesn't go past this point? So this is the smallest x value, which would be zero and it touches zero, so you can use a square bracket because square bracket means it's included, and then it doesn't ever stop. Can you see that this arrow is showing us that this graph never ever stops, it just keeps going. So we can say that it goes all the way to infinity. Now whenever we use infinity, we use a round bracket. Let's look at the range. Remember your range is your y values. So that means upwards and downwards. So we always look at the lowest y value first. That would be over here as well, at zero. It touches that point, so we can include it. And then I know it looks like this graph is flattening out, but in reality, it actually does that. And it actually keeps growing at a steady rate. So it actually goes all the way up to infinity over time. Okay, so we'll do it like that. Here's the next one. Now, when they put a negative in the front, what we are saying is that the y is negative, okay, the y is negative. So if I draw the original parent, so I'll do the parent in red, okay, and then I'll do the current graph, which I'll call, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna say child, um, I'm gonna say um, this graph, which is the one we're busy with, which is this one over here, I'll do that in green, okay, so you can get an idea. So we know that the parent is just that one, and I showed you that one in the previous slide, so that just does that. Now what we're saying is that the y value is the negative. So obviously this point over here wouldn't change because the negative of zero is still zero, but imagine this, x, this y value, sorry, is like a one, then the negative of that would be negative one, so it would be over here. And the negative of this one would be over here, and the negative of that one would be over there. So what happens is that this graph does that. So it's just a reflection across the x-axis, okay? To make the y values negative, you have to reflect across the x-axis. Now I'm going to get rid of this one. Now we're going to look at the domain. So that's all the x values. So it starts, remember x is along this axis over here. So the smallest x value would be this point over here, which is at a zero. And then the largest x value, well, it just keeps going, and so that would be infinity. Then for the range, the always do the, the smallest one and then the largest. So the smallest y, if you go down, would be, if this arrow just keeps going, um, it would go all the way down to negative infinity. We never include infinity, so we always use a round bracket. And then the highest y value would be this part over here, which is at zero, and we can include that one. Here's our next one. So once again, I'll do the parent in red. And then I'll do this graph in green. Okay, so, so the parent function, we know that that's the one I showed you earlier. That's just y equals square root x. Now, can you see that the x value is now a negative? If they put it in the front, then it's the y value. But now it's the x value that's a negative. So if you take the negative of this x value, let's say that x value is a 1, then the negative would be negative 1. So negative on the x-axis would be over here, and this part would be over here, and this part would be over here. So this graph just does that, 
okay? So it's actually a reflection across the y-axis. Now I'm gonna get rid of that, and so there we have our graph. So if we look at the domain, we always look at the smallest domain. So now the small numbers are to the left, the larger numbers are to the right. So the smallest number on the left would be going all the way to negative infinity. Yes, negative infinity is a very small number because it's negative. Then if you look at the largest x value, so you go this way, we can see that the graph stops over here. So that would be at zero, and we can include that. If we look at the range, we always look at the smallest um, y value first, which is down here at zero. And then if we look at the largest y value, well, this would actually keep going upwards. I know it looks like it's flattening out, but it actually doesn't. It sort of does that, and it just keeps going up. And so that would be infinity. Now we've got something interesting happening. We're going to make the y value negative, and we're also going to make the x negative. So I'll do the current, sorry, I'll do the parent, as always, in red. And in later parts of this video, we're also going to be doing examples where we're going to move the graph left and right, up and down. And so stick around, we've got some really good examples coming up. Okay, and then the current graph, we'll do that in green. Okay, so let's do the parent function first. So the parent function is just the original square root x, which we said goes like that. Now, if we make the y values negative, I showed you that one earlier. So that's where it did something like that. Okay, so I'm going to do that first. Okay, so we've taken care of that one. Then when you make the x values negative, it switches it over to, so this, for example, goes here. This, for example, goes over there. And this goes over there. And so if I draw through there now, that is the graph that we are looking for. So let's get rid of all the others. Can you see what I did? I did it in steps. I first did that part, and then I did that part. You can also do this part first, and then that part. That doesn't matter. But that is what the graph would look like. So if we look at the domain, the smallest domain, sorry, the smallest x value would be going all the way to negative infinity. And then on the right-hand side, the largest x value would actually be at zero with a square bracket. Then for the range, the smallest range with a y value, this actually just would keep going downwards. Um, so that would be negative infinity. And the largest y value would be over here at zero. And you can include that. Okay, now we're going to start looking at horizontal and vertical shifts. So here's the rule. If the number is inside the root, like this one is, can you see it's inside the root, whereas this one is outside, okay? So if it's inside the root, then that is a left or right, left or right, okay? If the number is outside the root, then it's up, whoops, it's a up or down. Okay, so this one is inside the root. Now, another thing you've got to remember is that plus means left and minus means right. That's a bit counterintuitive. You would think that plus means right and uh, minus means left. But with, with horizontal or left and right, it's always the opposite. With this one, it's not the opposite. If it's plus, then that means up, like you would normally think, and then minus would mean down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the parent in red, and then I'll do the current graph, which is this one, in green. So the parent function is just going to be y equals square root x, which we've looked at. Okay, so that just goes like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, that's inside the square root, so that means left and right. Now, if it's positive, then it means left. So you see how we're plusing three? So that means we're going to move this three places to the left. So that means this point would go here at negative three. And then the graph would just do something like that. You see, so we just moved everything three places to the left. So we can now get rid of this one. 
Now, if we had to look at the domain, well, the smallest x value is now negative 3. The largest x value is infinity, because you see how it keeps going to the right. Now, if we look at the range, the smallest y value would be this one over here, which is at 0. And the largest y value, if you have a look, it just keeps going up. So that would go all the way up to infinity. You know, eventually it would reach all the way up at infinity. Here's the next example. And I've also added the little rules that we discovered about the plus, minus, inside the root, outside the root. Okay, so here we have a negative 3, which is inside the root. Okay, so that's this one. Now remember, plus means left, negative means right. So let me first do the parent, which is in red. Okay, so the parent, as we've seen by now, is just y equals to the square root of x. Okay, so that's just going to go like that. Now, remember that negative, I mean, sorry, yeah, negative means right. So we're going to move three places to the right. So this point here would move to here, so this x value would be 3, and then it would follow the same type of shape. And so there is our graph. So if we had to look at the domain, uh, its lowest x value would be a 3, and its largest x value would be infinity. Then if we had to look at the range, its lowest y value is 0, because this is 0, right, this y value. And then it eventually goes all the way up to infinity if it had to just keep going. There we go. Here's the next one. So now we have a negative 4, but it's on the outside. So we look here. So it means up or down. So negative means down. Positive means up. So we're going to go down. So if I quickly draw the parent function, which, as always, I'll do that one in red. So that's just the normal y equals to square root x. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but it helps. So there we go. Now, um, so we're going to go negative 4, so that means down. Okay, so we're going to go 4 units down, so that's going to be over here. And then it just follows the same type of shape, like that. And then we can get rid of this one. And so that's what it would look like. So if we had to look at the domain, the smallest x value is still going to be here at 0. And then it will go all the way to infinity. And then if we look at the range... Well, the lowest y value is now going to be negative 4. And the largest y value would be infinity. Okay, here we have a positive 3, but it's not inside the square root. So we're not going to look at that one. It's on the outside. So, and the, this positive 3 means up. Okay, so... I'm going to move a bit faster now. So the parent function would look like that. That's the parent. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to move that three places up. Okay, so we're going to go three places up, two over there, and then we're just going to do the same type of thing, like that. Okay, then let's erase this one. So this would be now, well, that would be at three. If we're to look at the domain then the lowest x value is still going to be zero, okay, because that's an x value of zero. And then it would go all the way to the right to infinity. Now, if we were to look at the range, so the highest, I mean, the lowest y value is at 3. And the largest y value, well, this thing would actually just keep going, keep going, keep going. And so that would go all the way to infinity. Here's our next one. Now, this one's pretty cool because now it's doing a little bit of both. So let's start with the number that's on the inside. So that's on the inside of the root. So it means left or right. So positive means left. So let's start with that. So if the parent function does that, then if we move it four places to the left, then it would be here at negative four. And so that would do something like that over there. Let's take that away now. And then this negative three would move it three places down. Okay, so we can move it three places down to here. So this coordinate would be at negative 4 for the x and negative 3 for the y. And then it just sort of follows the same shape as the parent function. And so there we go. So now if we look at the, uh, let's start with the domain. Then its lowest x value is negative 4. And its largest x value would be infinity if it kept going. Then for the range the lowest x value, I mean y value, sorry, would be negative 3, 
and the largest one would be infinity because remember it actually keeps going up and up and up and up so eventually it would go all the way to infinity here's our last example so here we have um so we've got the positive six and the negative three let me just get the rules Okay, but then we also have this interesting little part over here. So I don't know if you can remember from earlier that if you have this, then that graph just goes like that. But as soon as you put a negative in the front, it says that the y value is negative. So if you find the negative y value of this one, it goes here and here and here. So it actually flips the graph upside down. So that's what's going to happen over here. We're actually going to have a flipped over graph. So let's begin. So I'm going to draw the parent function, as always. But by now, you probably know this pretty well. So there's the parent function, okay? Then you need to apply these different things, okay? So I'm going to apply the negative first. So that means the graph would go like that, okay? And that was because of this part. Then I'm going to apply this one. Now that is inside the root. So positive means left, okay? Positive means left. So I'm gonna take this blue one and I'm gonna move it six left. So we're gonna move it six to the left. So that's gonna be here. And then it'll follow the same type of shape. So this would be at negative six. Okay, so here's where we are now. Then I'm gonna apply the negative three, but that's outside the root. So that means three down. So we're gonna move three down from where we are. And so that would take us over here so this coordinate would be negative six for the x negative three for the y and then it will just follow that same shape now i know that it looks like mine is flattening out but you get it i'm running out of space so maybe i could actually modify it a little bit maybe i could do it there and then something like that so this would be at negative six negative three now we need to know those numbers when we do the domain and range so for the domain the lowest x value is negative six and the largest one is infinity. You see, it's going all the way to infinity. And then if we look at the range, um, the largest, uh, oh no, sorry, we always start with the smallest. So the smallest y value, well, that would keep going, um, it would keep going down and down and down and down and down. And so that's gonna be at negative infinity. And the largest y value, or the highest y value, would be at this point over here, which is at negative three, and we include that. Okay, and there we have it.